I've been using the M4 iPad Pro as my main computer for over a year and now with iPadOS 26, I strongly believe that the iPad is better than a Mac for most people. Notice I said most people, not everyone. I know it's a bold claim and I might even be slightly biased, but seriously, hear me out. With all the updates Apple just dropped in iPadOS 26, like advanced Mac-like multitasking, a supercharged files app, a menu bar for applications, background tasks capability, plus everything that makes the iPad uniquely portable and versatile, it's time that we rethink what computing really means. What I love about the iPad is that it's simpler yet smarter, but we'll get what I mean by that in a second. However, let's be real for a minute. Most people use their computers for a pretty short list of things. Email and web browsing, note taking and editing documents, making calls on Zoom and calendar planning, streaming content, and maybe some light photo editing or basic design work here and there. And for absolutely all of that, the iPad is not just capable, it's actually easier. For example, with Stage Manager, iPadOS supports persistent app groups. So if you're switching between a work layout and a content creation layout, your setup stays exactly how you left it, even when you connect it to an external monitor. And the learning curve is also way lower than macOS. The iPad feels like second nature. Tap, swipe, drag and drop, it adapts to you. You see, we live in a digital age of smartphones and touchscreen displays, so the iPad experience overall feels more vibrant, modern, and fun. And if you go beyond Stage Manager, then the new app windowing system in iPadOS 26 is next level as multitasking got a massive glow up this year. Similar to Stage Manager, you can open more windows at once and resize and arrange them your way. You can arrange windows with a flick to the left or the right, and now you can also split your iPad screen into thirds or quarters. You also get the familiar traffic light controls from the Mac that lets you close or minimize your windows, take them full screen, or arrange windows into easy to view layouts. You see, there was a time when the Mac always had an edge over the iPad because of multitasking. iPad initially was always designed to be a full screen app experience, but over the past few years, that has changed drastically. And like I said, with iPadOS 26, I love multitasking on the iPad. For an example, I can edit a YouTube script in the Notes app, research in Safari, and adjust a thumbnail in the Studio app, and it all feels so fluid. And yes, you can do all of this on a MacBook, but the tactile interaction of manipulating with just the touch of your finger or the Apple Pencil, along with the simplicity of iPadOS, it's just much more interactive. I always like to compare the iPad to the Apple Vision Pro because the Vision Pro is the most immersive computing experience ever. So what the Vision Pro is to the iPad is what the iPad is to the Mac. Now let's discuss portability and battery life. Regardless of which iPad model you choose, they are all very portable as they're super thin and light. My M4 iPad Pro, for example, which has a 13 inch display, weighs just over a pound. And even with the Magic Keyboard attached to it, it's still a great portable form factor. And the battery life is fantastic as well. With up to 10 hours of battery, I can edit videos, take my meetings, create designs, and chill with Netflix, all without worrying about a power outlet. Try that with a 16 inch MacBook Pro and you'll feel it on your back and your battery percentage. But now let me talk about my favorite part about the iPad, its versatility. You see, a MacBook is just a laptop, a screen that is always attached to the keyboard and trackpad, but an iPad, it's whatever you want it to be. Need to write a quick report? Snap on the magic keyboard. Wanna sketch ideas? Grab the Apple Pencil. Watching a movie? Remove the keyboard and use it like a tablet. And want an immersive video editing experience? Just connect your iPad to an external monitor and go full desktop mode. It's a chameleon and that matters in 2025 when hybrid work, mobile productivity, and content creation are the new normal. Plus with a Mac, you don't get a touchscreen, you don't get support for the Apple Pencil, and you can't remove the keyboard and the trackpad whenever you feel like it. With the iPad, it's as if you're actually holding the content in your hands and it just feels a lot more, dare I say, magical. And another option that you get for an iPad that you don't get with a Mac is cellular connectivity. Believe me, all MacBook owners out there crave for this, to be able to be online all the time. With the iPad, it's possible, so you never have to worry about your connection. You just unlock it and you're online. And I especially believe that when you're traveling, this is the best feature to have. But not just for traveling, even when I'm just visiting family or going to a local coffee shop, I don't have to ask for Wi-Fi credentials or worry if they even offer Wi-Fi at all. I just unlock my iPad and I'm online. Plus, I don't have to worry about connecting to some random Wi-Fi hotspot that can 
track you or access your information. And it's just way more reliable and convenient than just using your iPhone as a hotspot. This all brings the iPad closer to what many people expect from a smart computer without needing to go full on Mac or diving into complex system preferences. And for the times that you wanna get more out of your iPad and just be in full productivity mode, the Magic Keyboard is fantastic. The keys actually feel like a real laptop. The glass trackpad is very responsive and the angle options you get is perfect for both desk work and lap use. Plus with iPadOS 26, you get an actual pointed cursor now, keyboard shortcuts and full multitasking navigation, all while keeping your iPad ultra portable. Now in the very beginning of this video, I stated that the iPad is great for most people, not everyone. The Mac is still a powerful machine and it's still the ultimate tool for quite some people, especially those who are developers and programmers, audio engineers running Logic with dozens of plugins, pros editing feature length films in Final Cut with complex timelines, and many others who just need certain applications, programs, or plugins that are not available for the iPad but are for the Mac. But let's be honest here, the majority of the individuals who are watching this video may not be doing those things. Most people just want a fast, light, long lasting and a reliable device that does everything from email to content creation. And with the iPad, specifically with iPadOS 26 now, it truly delivers that more than ever before. Look, at the end of the day, if you're looking to upgrade your workflow, ditch the clutter and embrace something that's more fun and flexible, give the iPad a real shot, especially now with iPadOS 26. Because with it, the gap between the Mac and iPad isn't just closing, it's flipping. Also, as an avid iPad user, I swear by this beautiful sleeve from Comfiable. It looks super stylish, premium, and protects my iPad when I go to coffee shops and travel. I also rest my iPad on it so that the Magic Keyboard doesn't get dirty. It's only around like $25, comes in great premium colors, and I have the link to it in the description below. And as always, I want to know your thoughts. Are you using your iPad as your main device or are you considering it in the nearby future? Let me know in the comment section below along with any questions you may have as well. And if this video helped you, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.